All right, we're going to start getting a little more practical. Not because we've got a lot of stuff up there with affidavits and uh, bar grievances and judicial complaints. That stuff's great. I mean, I keep doing that, keep using it. Now we're going to start actually showing people how to structure suits, how to fight suits, and how to actually litigate a suit. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about one thing that I know is uh, hanging over a lot of people's head called trespass. Because you're getting these ridiculous, stupid citations for trespass. Well, there's elements to trespass. So I'm going to give you just a quick overview here. This is sort of stuff that they teach the uh, the attorneys in, for law school to take the bar. This is what they need to know. Let's go over trespass. First, we're going to start with trespass on the land. There's trespass against chattels, which is property, and there's trespass on the land. And uh, I think a lot of you are dealing with trespass on the land right now because you're going in these stores shopping, and lo and behold, you're being told you're trespassing. Now, we're going to show you why that's not so. Okay, li listen, we're going to read this real slow here. A person is subject to liability to another for trespass, where they intentionally enter onto the land in possession of another, or remain on the land without permission, or fail to remove a thing or object from the land which they are under duty to remove. Okay, so you're you entering that property. Uh, let's see, I don't think you're intentionally like entering a property unlawfully when you go in to shop for food that's a public accommodation. So look, a person is subject to liability to another for trespass where they intentionally enter onto the land or possession of, uh, in possession of another or remain on the land without permission. Well, do you not have permission to shop in that store? He, they, they can't say, hey, listen, you, you can only shop here if you're white or you're black or, you know, or you wear green sneakers or you got purple hair. You know, you, they can't put conditions on, uh, on on shopping in a store like that. I mean, it, this is not saying, hey, no shoot, no shirt, uh, no shoot, no shoes, no shirt policy. This is these are medical uh, determinations basically. They're asking you to limit your oxygen intake and breathe your own carbon dioxide in. So we, we've crossed over from the cosmetic thing of uh, you know shoes and a shirt to uh, you know limiting your breathing. So. They said they, they, they can't put these limitations on you. And here's the best one I like. In order to have standing to maintain a trespass action, standing means that you had a right violated or you've been damaged or harmed in some way. That's what gives you standing. Look, in order to have standing to maintain a trespass action, the plaintiff, which would be the cop uh, who's doing this for the uh, municipality, because it's never the store owner that's coming after you. I, I've yet to see one trespass where the store is pursuing the trespass against the uh, the man or woman that was in there shopping. It's always the store calling up the cop who comes in and he's going to trespass you under this municipal code for trespass, which you're not going to meet. I'm going to show you that too. And uh, uh, so it, it makes no sense because I, it's like I said, I've always said the owner's got to trespass you. And you're going to see that right here. In order to have standing to maintain a trespass action, the plaintiff must have actual possession of the land or right to possess the land. Actual possession of the land or right to possess the land, such, an, such as an adverse possessor or a leasee, would both be able to maintain a trespass action. Now, an adverse possessor, that's actually a squatter, okay? A squatter is anyone who's on the land who's not a tenant or a licensee, a licensee of the legal owner. So anyone who's not on a property that's not a tenant or a licensee, they're a, they're a squatter. But even they have rights on the land, okay? Uh, so uh, does the cop have or the municipality, do they have uh, actual possession of the land? No. Do they have a right to possess the land? Nope. They're not adverse possessors of the land and not, they're not leasees of the land. So look, they have no standing to maintain a trespass action. And we're going to get into trespass a little later to see what actually trespass is. Now, it's said that it's the intent to enter the land. Uh, it, it's not the intent to trespass that is important. It's the intent to enter the land. Now, mistake of ownership is no defense to trespass, which means if you think that you are on your land and you're actually on your neighbor's land, that's not a defense, okay? So, if, you know, if there's a dispute over a property line or something and you think you're on your land and you're actually on their land that you can't use that as a defense for trespass. Now, there's three main trespasses. There's an intentional trespass, which is obvious. You know, somebody goes into a place that they're not supposed to be. You know, they, you know, you, you got a gated, uh, say it's a, a junkyard, whatever, and it's gated up, you know, at night, and somebody climbs the fence, 
You know, that, that's a trespass, okay? That's an intentional trespass. Then you have negligent or reckless trespass. So if someone ne negligently or recklessly enters upon the land, there's no liability for trespass unless there's damage on the land. I guess think of reckless uh, trespasses. Say somebody's in a car and the, uh, you know, a, a dog comes down the street and they swerve to, to, to not hit the dog and they go up on somebody's lawn, okay? But just by them going up on the lawn, they, they didn't damage the lawn. They, they didn't take out a mailbox. They didn't do any damage. They just drove on the, the uh, people's lawn, okay? So if they didn't damage anything, that's not a trespass. That, that, that individual didn't commit a trespass because there's no damage to the land. Now, if he damaged the land, it's it's still not a trespass. He'd just be responsible for the damage to the land. It, it, but it, it wasn't it wasn't a uh, you know a, a planned thing. Okay, it wasn't an intentional trespass. It was him either recklessly or not. Say you say he wasn't paying attention. Say somebody dozed off driving a car and he drove up on somebody's land or somebody's property. You consider that a negligent or a reckless trespass. But as long as they don't commit damage, that's not. It's really not. A, it's, they're not liable for trespass because there's there's no damage to the property. It wasn't an intentional trespass. Then there's an accidental trespass, uh, and there's no liability for an accidental trespass if the entry is accidental and there's a non-negligent and it's unintentional. And a basic example would be like the golf ball example. Say a guy's on the course and he's hitting the ball, hits it down the fairway. And his, he's going straight down the fairway. He smacks his ball, and it hits a uh, branch and pops off into somebody else's property. Well, that was not an intentional trespass. That was an accidental trespass. All right? Uh, so that's not intentional. It's not even negligent or reckless. It's just accidental. It's a freak thing. So there are your three categories of trespass. Now, your mass citation walking into a store to shop for food or products, you don't meet any of these. You're not intentionally trespassing. You're not negligent or recklessly trespassing. And you didn't accidentally trespass. Now, listen, trespass can be committed on the land, beneath the land. So if somebody digs a tunnel under your property, okay, they're trespassing. Above the land, if somebody flying a drone over your house or if somebody uh, shoots a bullet and it passes over your property, that's a trespass, okay? Uh, so trespass could happen under the land, on the land, or above the land. Uh, now there's two couple there's a couple defenses to, to trespass. One's called privileged entry. Uh, in case of public and private necessity, a party is privileged to trespass upon the property of another with no liability. Uh, however, if it's a private necessity, and say a private necessity, say you're out in the on the water on a boat and this nasty storm kicks up. And, you know, you're in danger getting thrown, your boat getting, you know, turned over and you're, you're in danger. So you, uh, <clears throat> you motor over to the, the nearest dock and it's not your dock. It's, it's, you know, somebody else's dock and you dock your boat there. That is not a trespass, okay? That was a private necessity that you had, okay? Uh, as long as you don't damage that guy's dock, that's not a trespass. Now, if you damage the dock, your boat damages it in some way, then it's going to be, you're going to be liable for the trespass, Okay. But, uh, and also think of it like, uh, say somebody's got a small plane and, and they're flying and the little, one of them little Piper Cubs and the, the thing has trouble and they decide, oh my God, I'm not going to make it back to the runway. I'm going to have to land in this guy's field. And they land in the field. As long as they don't damage the field, that's not a trespass. That's a private necessity. They had to do that to avert a disaster. Okay. Now, if they take out the guy's crop when they land, then they're liable for the uh, the trespass, okay? Even though it's not uh, wasn't intentional, they're still liable for the damage they create. So they're called private necessities, and we'll deal with public necessities, you know, later when we start talk about chattel. Uh, and, and like we're talking about, basically uh, the, the trespass. Notice it's never say you're in Target and they trespass you. Somebody tar trespass you from Target. Uh, it's not the store that's pursuing the trespass. It's not the owner. It's not even the leasee of the store that's uh, pursuing the trespass. It's the cop, the police officer, and he's doing it on behalf of the municipality. And the problem they run into, like we said here, is they have no standing to maintain a trespass action against you because the plaintiff must have actual possession of the land or a right to possess the land. And neither the cop nor the municipality he's working for 
have actual possession of the land or a right to possess the land, nor are they adverse possessors, nor are they uh, uh, le- uh, licensees uh, uh, or tenants of the property. So they can't maintain standing to have a trespass action against you. And even if you look, even in Pennsylvania, here's basic trespass, 3503 criminal trespass. A person commits an offense if knowing that he is not licensed or privileged to do so. Are you, I'm pretty sure you're privileged when, when it's a public accommodation and they're open to the public and you enter during business hours, uh, you are privileged to enter upon that property. Okay, you have a, I don't, I don't want to call it a license. In a, in a way, it's sort of a license, but it's more privileged to enter upon the property. Now, if you enter upon the property when it's closed, that's different. Then it's a trespass and it's probably breaking and entering. But if it's normal business hours and the public's in there coming in and out, you have either a license or a privilege to enter that, that property. Okay, so you're not you're not trespassing. And look, enters gains entry by subterfuge. Are you sneaking in the building? <laughs> you know, I don't think so. Well, look, or serotypically, uh, I am, I'm going to try that one. Remains in any building or occupied structure or separately secured or occupied portion thereof. Breaks into any building or occupied structure. Did you break into the building? No. All right. And look, breaks into to gain entry by force, breaking, <laughs> intimidation, unauthorized opening of locks, or through an opening not designed for human access. I'm pretty sure that door you went through, that was designed for human access, okay? So you, you don't meet any of this, okay? And there's two types of trespassers they break it down to. Look, defiant trespasser is Pennsylvania. A person commits an offense if... Knowing that he is not a license or privilege to do so, he enters or remains in any place to which notice against trespass is given. I'm pretty sure when you're walking in the giant to fi- start shop for food or Acme to shop for food, there's no trespass sign there. You know, you, it, it's a public accommodation. The doors are open. So uh, there's got to be an actual communication to you that you're trespassing. Posting in a manner prescribed by law, reasonably likely to come to the attention of the intruder. You're not an intruder. Fencing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they'll have fences around the doors when you're entering. Notices posted in a manner prescribed by law. I have don't remember seeing any trespass signs when I'm going into Mac, Acme Markets to shop for food. An actual communication that they acted to leave. This is your school grounds, okay? So you don't meet any of the defiant trespasser elements. Now let's go down to the simple trespasser elements. A person commits an offense if, knowing that he is not licensed or privileged to do so, he enters or remains in any place for the purpose of threatening or terrorizing the owner (laughs) or occupant of the premises. Uh, When you're in their shop for food, are you threatening and terrorizing the owner and the occupant of the premises or the, the patrons in the store? No. Starting or causing to be started any fire upon the premises. Uh, listen, I, I don't know you, but when I go to stores for shop for food, uh, I'm not starting fires in the store. You know, <laughs> if this is a problem, you know, you're going to get trespassed. So you're not doing that. Or defacing or damaging the premises. Are you defacing or damaging the premises walking around shopping for food? No. So there you go. You, you don't meet any of the elements of trespass and you know to maintain a trespass a plaintiff must have actual possession of the land or a right to possess the land that's not the police officer that wrote the citation and it's not the municipality he works for they have no standing to maintain a trespass action if a trespass action were to be maintained it would have to be from the owner or the leasee which would be most stores not all. Most stores lease the property from the uh, the uh, uh, the shopping center uh, company, whoever whoever owns that shopping center. They generally lease the property. Some big stores own their own property, but but most will lease their property. So uh, the cop is no standing. The municipality has no standing to maintain a trespass action. This is why I say you have to be the owner. Or you have to have, look, possession uh, or uh, a right to possess the land. In other words, you've got to be the owner to maintain a trespass action. 
the cop can't do it, and the fictional corporation doing business as whoever, whatever the municipality is, what a Dun and Bradstreet number, that's nothing but a stack of papers, can't maintain a trespass action. And the attorney that's going to bring this ridiculous thing, he's got no personal knowledge of anything that happened that day. He can't testify to anything that happened that day. He's not a witness. He's got no standing in the matter, no personal knowledge. Okay, so he has shouldn't even be involved in this matter if it's a trespass. If it's a trespass, the owner of the store or the leasee of the store have to bring the trespass. The cop doesn't have standing, the municipality doesn't have standing, and Mr. Attorney doesn't have standing. So use this stuff. Challenge this against them. This is how you knock out their paperwork. You take their, whatever they're charging you under, you go print it out. You go learn that code, whatever they're charging you under, you read it inside and out. And you go through everything. Look, licensed or privileged, he is not licensed or privileged to do so. So they would have to argue that you are not privileged to enter a public accommodation to shop. Good luck with that. And they can't impose unlawful things upon you to access their business, okay? It's really no different from them saying, hey, listen, you've got to let us rape you to enter the building. This is our policy, you know? Or we have a policy against black people, or we got a policy against white people, or we got a policy against brown people, or we got a policy against people that wear black shoes and red shoes. And what? These are policies. Policies don't override rights. There's this, there's this little, you know, it's, it's an agitation for them. It's called the Supremacy Clause, Article 6, Clause 2, which basically states the federal constitution is the law of the land and anything in conflict with it, including the state constitution and any corporate code, statutes, ordinances, whatever, that are in conflict with that federal constitution are notwithstanding, okay? So they can't use their policy to supersede secured rights. And when you argue this stuff, I'm trying to get this across to people now. You don't argue that you had your constitutional rights violated. You don't have constitutional rights. Get that in your head. You do not have constitutional rights. Constitution does not grant you rights, okay? You have natural rights or God-given rights, okay? Uh, they're, They're a known thing. It's not a debate. You have these rights, okay? So what's actually happening is the officer that brought this action didn't exercise objective reasonableness Uh, and by not exercising objective reasonableness he violated clearly established law while abusing a statute he's abusing the statute here this criminal trespass statute while abusing a statute under the color of law because what he's doing is not the actual law we just read the actual law right we read it We, we know we don't meet the elements of this law and we we just read about how you have to have standing to maintain an action. So that's the actual law. But he's not doing that. He's using some color of law process against you, trying to claim he can maintain a trespass action for a municipality that has no standing in a matter. And not only do they have no standing, there's no evidence that you entered the property unlawfully, lawfully, or you're doing, there, doing anything there unlawfully on it. And... Uh, because what's happened in these, these these stores, they are actually practicing medicine without a license. They're discriminating, and they are uh, they're they're simulating legal process by sort of acting like courts. They're determining that that their codes, their policies, supersede your rights, and they are under the belief that they have private property, and they can make you do anything they want under private property. But they're not private property when they're open to the public. They're private property when they're closed to the public, okay? That's when they're private property. When they open that door to the public, they become a public accommodation. They're no longer private property in that matter, okay? They can't dictate uh, medical interventions upon you to come into their their place of business. Because this is not a, you know, this is not the no shoes, no shirt thing where, you know, no shoes, no shirt, no service. This is a medical intervention. They're, they're asking, asking you to, to uh, cover up your, your face and limit your oxygen intake and breathe in your own carbon dioxide. Well, now we're getting into medical interventions. These are, these are right violations. And 
I mean, really, it's, it's the equivalent to them saying, hey, you know, like I said, you, you, you got to let us rape you to come shop here. You know, or we have this policy, no black people can shop here. You know, it's our policy. Well, they could never do that. I mean, it's illegal. Uh, it's detestable and it's illegal. And to me, so is a mask. Making somebody cover their face up to, to, to not breathe their own oxygen and to have to breathe their own carbon dioxide in it, it's detestable. So they are operating under the color of law. So when you argue this stuff, I just want to keep banging this in your head. You don't argue that my rights were violated. I got rights and they were violated. Don't argue that. Okay, that, that's not your argument. Your argument is this officer, this policeman guy, he failed to exercise objective reasonableness. And because he did that, failed to exercise objective reasonableness, he violated clearly established laws. And further, he, viol- he, 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 he abused a statute, this criminal trespass statute, by acting under the color of law. And because he did that, he acted under the color of law, he caused me the following damages. Loss of my liberty, uh, public humiliation, shame, embarrassment. These are all causes of action that, that you can get paid for. And as far as this purist attitude of, oh, it's not about the money and I don't want them, stop with that stupid stuff. Get your head out of your rear end, okay? It's always about the money. Here's what the money's about, basically. These people carry insurance. Guess who's got to pay the claim, the money claim? The insurance company's got to pay that claim. When that insurance company gets banged and you bang them good, they're going to turn around their store and go, hey, knock it off. We're not paying this again. And that's how you get policies changed. And that's how things get changed. And this is how people disappear from jobs. Because somebody got banged by somebody for a huge settlement for doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. So stop with the purist. Put yourself up on the cross. Oh, it's nothing to do with the money. Stop. Stop being an idiot, okay? It's always about the money. It's called liability. It's how you protect yourself. When you show them their liability, and that's a money thing for them because they all have insurance, that's how you protect yourself. And when you do it well enough, like some people I know, you're not even going to get into the court. They're not going to come into court with you. They're going to sign non-disclosure agreements with you, okay? They're going to make you go away, okay? And the insurance company, if they're getting banged for that non-disclosure agreement amount, they're going to tell the store, By the way, we're going to raise your rates, and you better knock it off because we're not paying these no more. And if we get hit with another one of these claims, we're going to drop your insurance. This is how you deal with public servants and people out in the business world, uh, merchants. This is how you deal with them. You go after their vulnerabilities, which is their insurance. So use this stuff. Learn it. This is how you attack their paperwork. Go get that statute, print it out, read it, understand it, and then look at the elements of what a trespass is, and then you make your argument, hey, listen, uh, this doesn't, this is not me. Uh, I was privileged to enter that, that building because it's a public accommodation open to the public, okay? Uh, and then you go talk about maintaining the trespass. Hey, there's nobody here withstanding to maintain a trespass, this trespass action because a plaintiff must have actual possession of the land or right to possess the land. That's not the cop who wrote this up, and that's not the municipality who's in name this is being brought, uh, brought the, bringing the action. And oh, by the way, it's fraud to bring an action against me in the name of a corporation, a corporate fiction, because I can't question a corporation. Okay, I I can't quite, and the attorney can't speak for the corporation. They may want you to believe he can. He can't. He's got no personal knowledge to speak for the corporation. He's not a witness. Okay, so if he can't speak for the corporation, the only one going to speak for the corporation is the owner or the leasee who has the rights to that land to possess that land. They're going to have to come in here and speak against me. And guess what's not going to happen? I highly doubt the owner or the leasee is going to come in and push this trespass action. So attack the, attack the details of it with the facts. Here's the law. Here's what the law says. Here's the elements. And you guys don't meet the elements and the facts. I need you to make this go away. And hopefully if you do it right, you'll actually get paid for it. 
So that's it. Just wanted to get this started, get it rolled out, because I know a lot of people are facing this dumb trespass thing. Go knock it out. Knock it out in your paperwork. All right, guys, take care.